conductor. What, what did he hit? Nothing. Is this, uh, is this Pixley? Does it look like Pixley? I don't know. I've never been to Pixley. Conductor has to answer more silly questions. <laughs> Hey, that looks all right. I ain't interested in how they look to you. The only opinion that counts is Kate's. Size is right. It was good. If you don't stop, shh, Kate's concentrating. Hmm. It's perfect. Hooray! <laughs> Chloe, let's pick apples. Hey, hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hey, you want to be more careful, you big lot. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. I didn't know you were there. What's going on? Oh, the same thing that goes on every year about this time. The apples are just right for bachelor butter. Well, I knew it had to do with getting something free to get them two big tubs of lard moving that fast. Oh, they look forward to it. Okay. It ain't right. Charlie and Floyd, Sam Drucker, Doc, and all the rest of them imposing on you. Well, they're not imposing on me. You know something? I think I enjoy making bachelor butter for them as much as they enjoy eating it. And you enjoy it, too. Yeah, but in the whole 20 years you've been doing it, you've never seen me making a fool out of myself, climbing all over Ben's trees and picking apples, lugging them up here, bringing you empty jars to fill. No, I never have. You want to know why? Mm-hmm. Because I've got self-respect. <laughs> Oh, that's the reason. Yeah, I'm a bachelor like they are, too. But you don't catch me playing on your sympathies, making you slave in the kitchen all day, neglecting your other work, just so I can have a few jars of homemade preserves. Kate, why do you do it? Well, them being bachelors, they don't have any women folk to home cook for them. And besides, it's a way of showing my appreciation for all the nice things they do for me. What do they do for you? Well... Floyd and Charlie take the girls to school. They run me into town. They steer salesmen to the hotel. Doc Stewart never sends me a bill. And Sam lets me run up my credit way beyond good sense. But outside of that, what do they do for you? <laughs> well, that's going to take a little thought. <laughs> Conductor, uh, this train is going backwards. How about that? And some folks accuse us of running an old-fashioned railroad. Yeah, but we're going to Hooterville. Uh, I'm supposed to be in Pixley at 10 o'clock. Then don't travel during bachelor butter season. <laughs> oh! Doc, did you hear the whistle? Yeah. Yeah. Well, grab all your empty jars and come around it. <laughs> we're going to have to be here. Well, you're just guessing I'd say three more bushels. <laughs> Conductor, I have to be in Pixley this morning. I'll be lucky if I get there late tonight. Or early tomorrow morning, depending on how soon Kate finishes the bachelor butter. If I was you, I'd depend on staying over at the Shady Rest Hotel. This is sheer idiocy. Disrupting a railroad to pick apples. Mister, any more of that radical talk, and you're going to be put off of this train. <laughs> Instead of squabbling, just tell Uncle Joe how many jars you got, and he'll see that you get back what's due you. Yeah, just line up right here. <laughs> All right, Sam, how many you got? Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two? There won't be no butter for the rest of us. Well, twelve is Doc's. Why didn't he come himself? He had to take out Lou Dawson's appendix. Lou had all year to have it took out. <laughs> you know that bachelor butter your mother makes must be something pretty special to cause all that excitement. I wish some of our food products did. What kind of firm do you travel for? HDL Food Products. We put out all sorts of canned goods. Betty Jo, get your sisters. Bobby Jo, Billy Jo, Mom wants us. <sighs> Woman's work is never done. <laughs> I thought I 
put the paraffin on the top shelf. <laughs> now, when the alarm goes off in 16 minutes, the apples will be boiled enough. Mom, how can you tell if that thing's set for the right time? I've been making bachelor butter with this clock since before you girls were born. And when I set it for 16 minutes, it goes off in 16 minutes. Most of the time. <laughs> What's the matter? I never saw such sloppy rockers in my life. You should rock to and fro together. Ain't we? No. When I'm froing, you're toing. When I'm toing, you're froing. <laughs> well, let's do it right. One, two, three. This sure is a strain every year. Kate should be sieving the apples by now. Uh, she's past sieving. Not by railroad time. Sounds to me like you're just heating up the cider. Oh, cider's boiled down enough, Billy Joe. Mom, how much longer? No, 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 just keep stirring. There we go. Bobby Joe, sugar. Sweet enough. But how do you know without tasting it? If I tasted everything I cooked, I'd be as big as this stove. <laughs> and you girls better remember that when you get married and you start cooking for your husbands. Yeah, I suppose if you put on too much weight, romance goes right out the door. Mm -hmm. And you can't squeeze out after it. <laughs> <laughs> now for the ground clothes. Seriously, Mom, I've watched you every time you made this recipe and I can't figure it out. How much sugar did you really put in? Five scoops and a sprinkle. And be accurate. <laughs> accurate? Yeah, accurate. <laughs> Boyd, what's the matter? Joe heard something. I think I heard the oven door open. That was the oven. Get a spoon, Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe's getting a spoon. Kate's gonna taste it. How many years you been freeloading bachelor butter? Twenty or so. Then you ought to know the first thing Kate does to find out if it's thick enough. Hey, <laughs> okay. Thickness is right. Now they're gonna taste it. like Bobby Joe's tasting. <laughs> Sounds like Betty Joe's getting in her licks. <laughs> Somebody else is tasting. It's more than tasting, it's kind of slurping. <laughs> Yummy. Bobby Joe. Delicious, Mom. Kate's pulling the jury. Billy Joe. Dreamy. How about you? Now declare this year's batch of bachelor butter ready for eating. You know, Mrs. Bradley, after tasting your bachelor butter, I can see what all the excitement was about last night. Well, thank you, Mr. Cranville. Would you like to have a jar of take home with you? Well, that would be wonderful. Wait a minute. You a bachelor? No, I'm not. Then that'll be a dollar. <laughs> Joe. You know the rule, Kate. Free to bachelors if they provide their own jar. I don't suppose you got your own jar. But no. Then that'll be a dollar and a quarter. In spite of what Uncle Joe says, you may have a jar with my compliments. Well, actually, I'd like two jars. Boy, Charlie and Floyd could take free loading lessons from him. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Mr. Crandall is our guest. You can have as many jars as you want. Two will be fine. I have an idea about this bachelor butter. Yeah. 
It's delicious. I've never tasted anything like it. You agree with Kimberly Stevens? Yes, I certainly do. Gentlemen, do you think we can produce this commercially? If Mrs. Bradley will show us how she makes it, we'll have it in production in a month. Good, I'll write Mrs. Bradley immediately and make an offer. Oh, uh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Bradley gave me this personally. <laughs> and the enclosed check for $250. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. <laughs> to evidence our good faith upon delivery and satisfactory preparation of your bachelor butter recipe, we will pay you an additional two hundred and fifty dollars. That's five hundred dollars. <laughs> Please advise us if this is acceptable, and we will arrange transportation to our factory for you and hotel accommodations. Gee, well, you're going to accept the offer, aren't you, Mom? Well... Hey, hold on a minute. Let me see the check. Who is this fellow Jenkins that signed it? Well, it says right here he's the comptroller. Yeah, but how do you know that's his signature? You should have sent along some identification. <laughs> you know, you can't be too careful, Kate. Oh, I'm sure it's all right. What are you going to do, Mom? i got to make some more of the stove polish. This is the last of it. <laughs> I mean about the offer. You're going to go. Of course she is. But how can I go and leave you girls in the hotel? Uncle Joe will be here. I'll go along with you and see if they don't pull no fast ones. Uh, they said they'd only send Mom's transportation. Probably afraid to have me come. I reckon that Crandall told him about my shrewd reputation. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Gosh, Mom, all that money. Oh, yeah, Mom, you've got to go. I know. Let's put it to a family vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Wait a minute. There's still one member of the family who hasn't voted yet. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> now it's unanimous. How do you get a jar of bachelor butter? I gave it to him. After all, he's a bachelor. <laughs> well, aren't you? <laughs> And, uh, and you've never written down the recipe, huh? I never write down any of my recipes. Oh, well, what do I have to wear this for? I brought my own apron. Well, we have to work under the most sanitary of conditions. My apron is as clean as this. <laughs> what we have to do, Mrs. Bradley, is make up a sample batch of your bachelor butter, then we'll record the ingredients and their exact proportions. Okay. Now, what do you need first? Well, a kettle. How many gallons? Oh, but, um, so many. How's this? Yeah, that's fine. That's about right. Yeah. All right. Now, what is the first step? We gotta boil the water. How many liters? No liters. Just water and apples. <laughs> A liter is 1.0567 quarts. Oh, quarts! <laughs> Why don't you say so? <laughs> I'm sorry. How many quarts of water do you use? You fill the pot to the top of the dent. What dent? The dent that's been in it ever since the train hit it. The, uh, train? Yeah. The day of the picnic. Uncle Joe left his stand in the middle of the tracks loaded with soda pop, and Charlie nudged it with the cow catcher. Now, uh, just where was this dent? Well, uh, right about there. See? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> right about there. Uh -huh. Well, it isn't as deep as the one the train made, but it'll do. <laughs> Come on. All right. Now that we've washed the apples, we've got to cut them in quarters. I see. And then when the water boils, we dump them in and add the sugar. How much sugar? Well, it depends on how tart the apples are. Well, how do you determine that? By the pucker test. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Well, you, you, you bite into the apple, and you see how much your mouth puckers, and then you know how much sugar to use. Oh, well, you see, this is a, a two scoop and a sprinkle pucker. A little, a little more. Yeah, that's right. Now, this is a, a three scoop and a smidgen batch. <laughs> and this here is a five scooper and a dab. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, we're going to have to be a little more scientific than that. Measure the tartness by instrument. You mean you got some kind of gadget that makes sour faces? <laughs> now, put the apples through the sieve, boil down the cider, and add it to the puree. Now, what's the next step? Seasoning. 
I'll need um, nutmeg, allspice, cinnamon, and ground cloves. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Oh. Now, do you, uh, do you add these in any special order? Well, I usually start with the uh, ground cloves. And how much do you use? Well, let's see now. This was a scoop and a half in a smidgen batch, uh, about half a jar. A quart jar? No, Ningledorf mayonnaise jar. <laughs> how big is a, uh, a, um, a it? Well, Ingledorf always uses the same size. It's, um, it's bigger than a small relish jar, but uh, smaller than a, a medium-sized pickle jar. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, pick one up. Oh, I doubt it. Ingledorf's been out of business for years. Maybe you could kind of guess at it. Well, I could try. But, but it won't be as accurate as if I had my Ingledorf jar here. Now, before you season the puree, hadn't we better set the oven? Uh, how many degrees Fahrenheit do you bake it at? I, I never degreed it. Well, when the oven's right, I just stick the puree in. Well, you must have some way of measuring how hot it is. Oh, sure. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I, I always know when the oven is right, because the dog usually rolls over on his back and sleeps with his paws in the air. good, is it? Frankly, Mrs. Bradley, it, it isn't up to the sample that Mr. Crandall brought in. Well, how could it be? Cooking in here is like cooking in the operating room at the county hospital. You know, you might keep germs out of here, but you sure don't let any friendliness in. And, uh, and how can I cook on the stove like that? Can't wear my own apron. I now, can't do now, this. Now, 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 take it easy, Mrs. Bradley. We never expect things to turn out exactly right the first time. It's not going to turn out right the second time, the third time, or any time, Mr. Crandall. I just can't cook under these conditions. i got to have my own pots, my own stove, my own dog. <laughs> satisfied with the way we're doing this job, we'll be glad to let you take over. I gotta get the rest of this stuff on case list. See, there's pots, sieve, Ingeldorf mayonnaise jar. I know they should have gone along. She's probably ruined that whole $500 deal I dickered up for. As soon as you boys get that stove loaded on the train, you come back up and I'll have the rest of the stuff loaded ready to take down. Have it ready for us to haul down? What does he think? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Stove's resting on my foot. <laughs> well, for crying out loud. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Because you always holler at me when I interrupt the conversation. <laughs> Dark mayonnaise jar. <laughs> Dog. Well, I guess that's everything. Now, if one of you fellas will fill that kettle up to the dent, we'll get to boil it. Uh, oh, Mr. Kimberly, are you sure that stovepipe's fixed now? Yes, it's fitted right into the air conditioning duct. Now, if you need any more wood, we still have half of Mr. Crandall's desk chair and a hat rack. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think we'll need it. <laughs> stove stopping to warm up, all right. How old is this stove, anyway? Oh, it's been in my family for 65 years. How do you keep it looking so new? Rub it down twice a week with my stove polish. <laughs> There's the water. Now, what's next? Gotta get started with the apples. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kimberly, start tossing. Boys at MIT could only see me now. Bobby Joe usually does the quartering, but I didn't want to take the girls out of school. Now, this is exactly what goes on in your home when you make bachelor butter, Mrs. Bradley, huh? Not quite. There's just one more thing. Okay, fellas, start rocking. 
down, we'll make the puree, spice it up, and stick it in the oven. Is the oven hot enough yet? <laughs> Not yet. Hey, fellas, we ain't rocking together. It don't make no difference. Rock free him. <laughs> I sure feel silly sitting out here in a hallway rocking. I do, too. But we're doing it for Kate. <laughs> well, the puree's done. Now all we got to do is pour it in the crock and stick it in the oven. Is the oven hot enough? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Hold it. I think I heard the oven door. Thank goodness. Now we can get out of here. Ain't we gonna listen at the door like we always do? What for? Well? <laughs> That's pretty good. It isn't good at all. Sorry, Mr. Crandall. Just isn't going to work. I don't understand it, Mrs. Bradley. We brought everything you asked for. The stove, your pots, your dog, your friends. All except the most important thing, the anticipation. What? Yeah, the fun the fellas have looking forward to my bachelor butter every year. You know, watching the apples turn just right, taking them, squabbling over whose jar is whose. Me and the girls trying to make every batch the best. Well, those are the things that are missing in this. I think I understand, Mrs. Bradley. We could probably come pretty close to making your bachelor butter at the factory, but it would always lack that one essential ingredient you give it. Love. Yeah, that's just about the size of it. I'm sorry. Come on, Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you boys will come by the Shady Breast about this time next year and bring your own jars, I'll fill them up with the best bachelor butter you ever tasted. <laughs> you can stop rocking, fellas. We're going home. Good. Hooray! Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. I wouldn't trade my stove for ten of those fancy cookers with all their doodads and gym cracks. Oh, Mom, you're just old-fashioned. Mom, we're awful sorry the way everything turned out. So am I, honey. We could have used that money. Don't worry. Uncle Joe will come up with something. Hey! Hey! Sounds like he already has. Hey, yeah, that sounds like his Kate, I'm gonna make you millionaire voice. Hey, I'm gonna make you millionaire. <laughs> this letter just come from Mr. Crandall. He sent back the check you returned. He wants you to keep it. Well, I can't do that. Sure you can. He wants to make another deal. My bachelor butter recipe is not for sale. Oh, he, he don't want that. Nor my strawberry preserves, my gooseberry jelly, or my apricot jam. He don't want them either. He's offering you $500 for the formula to your stove polish. It says right here in the letter, you never seen anything in clean stoves like this. Oh, well, shit. It, they don't take no picking, no jar shoving, no rocking, no... <laughs> All it takes is... mopping. This has been a Filmways presentation.